the washed up hand me down send sends of time with candles you can't handle because the random phantom will dandle you on his knee with an infantile rant because he's not extant. <laughs> I see it's poetry time again. It, it has a special name. What do you call it, Jack? Beat poetry, Ma. I'm just practicing. Well, it beats me. Have you had any second thoughts about it? Well, the drug seems all right. You've tried it yourself? Well, the girl gets curious. What was it like? Oh, it's a trip, Frank. The world gets all kind of warped, and you kind of feel like you're finally seeing things for the way they are. It's a, it's a, it's a laugh, I guess. Interesting. And your clients? Well, it certainly changes the quality of our time together. I imagine so. Acid is a new full-length play by John Shonaboom that we, that's myself in association with Alphabeti Theatre and a brilliant creative team, are developing for a future production. We hope it will find its way onto a stage sometime after the Covid crisis in 2021. The story of Acid takes place in 1950s America, split between a suburban family house, a CAA laboratory and a brothel. It's based on the very real and deeply shocking history of CIA experiments with LSD. Acid introduces us to Frank, a scientist who begins to question the unpalatable CIA practices. Not least, fitting one-way mirrors in brothels and dosing male visitors whilst paying off and ruthlessly exploiting female sex workers. There's also Ajax, a chaotic CIA agent who enjoys nothing more than sampling the drugs themselves, Sidney Gottlieb, the scheming chief scientist, Frank's wife, who appears to be his conscience, Frank's son, an emerging beat poet of questionable repute, and Belle, a prostitute who plays a pivotal role in the journey to the play's ultimately tragic end. Sounds dark? Yes, it is. But the strength of John's writing is his ability to make something disturbing and tragic simultaneously hilarious and absurd. The play is partly a pastiche of stereotypical picket fence America, partly an expose of horrifying breaches of civil rights, and partly a grotesque comedy. We need to understand these things in case they fall into the hands of those with less scruples. Fewer. And you believe that. That's adorable. Well, not all cynics, mister. Oh, please. One of us here is truly comfortable with our weaponry, and one of us isn't. That's all. By the way, Frank, you smell fantastic. Yeah, thanks. Oh, really? You smell great. Is that cologne? Granted, the acid is kicking in, but this may sound strange, but may I touch your face? (laughs) Why this play, and why now? Well, for one, the themes of torture of misuse of state powers, of the moral complexities and conflicts that emerge from social situations are completely relevant to our time. But ACID also came out of an 18-month project called Just Right. A partnership scheme funded by Arts Council England, this provided opportunities for writers in a whole number of different ways. Led by Ben Dickinson, yours truly, in association with Alphabeti Theatre and in partnership with Coracle and The 620, The Just Right project provided a range of short courses in theatre writing, called Write Something, provided short play commissions for things like Alphabeti Theatre's Christmas Cabaret, brought back one of Alphabeti's old favourites, called Three Shorts, offered writers mentoring, and created a special programme to help writers develop longer form plays. We called that Write Longer. Out of the Write Longer workshops, held over several months, we selected three scripts to take forward for further development. The last one is Acid, and this film tells you how we've started work on taking this darkly funny gem from page to stage. We began by bringing together an exciting creative team for a development workshop. In the room were writer, cast, director, designer, a filmmaker, and Alphabeti Theatre's artistic director acting as dramaturg. Our aim was to dig deeper into the world of the play, to understand what was specific and what was universal, identify which characters we need to develop further, establish the boundaries of comedy and serious drama that ripple through the play like waves, and tackle the thorny challenge of realising a true story from 65 years ago 
with due respect to the principles of equality and representation that, rightly, govern our approach to making theatre in the 2020s. In the past, we would have done that over a full day in an open space with lunch, moving the company around, trying scenes with different approaches. Maybe, as a group, playing with items in model boxes, or moving real large bits of set and scenery around to try and create the environment that we wanted for our play. But we are running this workshop in July 2020, in the wake of a global pandemic. To keep us COVID safe, we did everything in half a day, sat over two metres apart, used microphones, wore masks, avoided movement or staging, and didn't even share pens or pass pages of scripts between us. Welcome to Socially Distanced Theatre Making. Of, of how to really suck in an audience and go, well, let's really focus on th them going, actually, this, this could have been me, this could have been my granddad, this could have been th what's happening right yeah. now. If every character and every bit of the story doesn't earn its place, the overall picture of that, that political social world that you're dissecting and that question of morality gets slightly undermined because the audience don't buy it. Yeah, that's great, that's great feedback. And then the other bit that, that I think happens is that is that if, if you are going for the, which you write really well, that kind of ping, 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 and it's, it, it, it's funny, but it's also dark and it's a bit shocking. If you don't take the subject matter of that comedy seriously, we all it is is a laugh. And actually, that's where Ali's point yeah. about the foot is right, because I, uh, I didn't think it was funny when I read it, but yeah. when you guys read it there, yeah. I thought the clubfoot scene was, was for laughs there, but I didn't when I read it on, on the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in terms of like, yeah, costume, again, it's this like slick CIA agent, but also they're just, they're just awful. They're awful people. Our group includes actors Steve Byron, Paula Penman, Bob Nicholson and Natasha Hawes. They're all theatre makers, directors, writers in their own right, as well as being very fine actors. And me, Ben Dickinson, Alphabetti's associate literary producer and the director of this play. Our designer is Molly Barrett, who has designed a ton of fantastic shows at Alphabetti over a number of years. Also in the room is Adam Goodwin, our filmmaker and all-round technical expert, and of course Ali Pritchard, Alphabetti's artistic director. And then there's John, a novelist and playwright hailing from New York, who has lived in Newcastle since 2010, winning a Northern Writers Award in 2016. We challenged the acid script. Not because there's anything wrong with the play, but because any great piece of theatre needs to know that it can stand up to the tests that an audience will throw at it. So, how does the story work? Does the narrative hold together? We've got a central protagonist, Frank. But does every character have a satisfying journey? And how are different genders treated in the play? Where is the line between comedy, satire, surrealism and the serious business of showing the horrific actions of the CIA for what they were then, and by implication what they have been since. Every good play needs to be taken apart in the workshop room and put back together at some point. And John embraced that process fully, challenging back when he needed to, and going away with a list of ideas to tweak and change to make this already great script even better. Then we got into the business of character. We talked about accents, of course, the whole play is set in the United States, but we also talked about motivation and the style of each character's performance. Is Ajax a fool, reveling in LSD trips or a calculating mercenary sociopath or some combination of the both, shifting between them in different scenes? How can we situate this play in the specific time that it takes place and be sure at the same time to show Belle's choices, her strength. I think that I haven't looked at it as in with my normal critical eye towards um, female characters in new writing because I feel like it's written so specifically for a certain time. It's experimenting on people. And he said he's still doing it. He didn't say no if he was, if he was, if he was that righteous of a man. He'd have said no. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And it's about, but also picking out yeah. the stories of all. I think I think there should be somewhere 
within it that someone can relate to every single character within that. I think we have to go quite stripped back and look at going very much to kind of bare bones and yeah. then stylistic. Yeah, the essence of something. That. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, the fundamentals of a table and yeah. uh, probably four chairs. Like, really tell the story of she's a sex worker, but she's chosen to do that. Like, she finds power in that. So maybe Frank does come to be like, I'm going to take you out of here and I'm going to find you a safe space and stuff. Yeah. And she stands against it and says, you know, like, this is my choice. This is the work that I've chosen to do. And then... It was all about design. Molly's ideas for simple staging that would channel the atmosphere and feel of Mad Men, of white picket fences and that idealised American dream in a really simple but very effective way. And yet at the same time bring through the psychedelic trips of acid and LSD through lighting and imagery. What were the answers? Well, you've seen some of them here, but we're not going to give you them all. The rest of them are coming soon. You're a sick man. You're sitting there thinking about stabbing me t uh, to death with a little pair of stone scissors, and I'm a sick man? <sighs> You're like sewing. I can never do that. I can't, I can't sew on a button. Uh, I wish I could. Know what I mean? Kit, thank goodness you're here. Kit, I've made a terrible mistake. What mistake, honey? It doesn't matter. Well, can't you just talk? Can you talk to me? They would know. If I told you, they would know. Who would know? You wouldn't be safe. They would know. Oh, Frank, what have they done to you? Shh. I think they're listening. Who's listening? There's something I have to do, babe. What is it? I, I want to destroy my wallet. So, mark your card. Clean your brain of mind-altering substances and check you're not being followed by any shady characters, especially if their name is Ajax. And get ready to reassess your understanding of the American dream. Join us for some acid in 2021. It's going to be some trip. <laughs>